A lot of new CPUs are coming out this year, and sure, they're exciting, but what if I told you you could get a larger performance increase by just changing one setting than any new CPU upgrade could get you this year? Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30 percent off. You can also check out securely with PayPal and once the payment is cleared you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10 just search activate under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more be sure to click the link in the description below. Okay so you want more FPS in your games and the latest and greatest CPUs just aren't cutting it. Well I got great news for you because a new setting in Windows 11 appears to be absolutely destroying performance and that setting is virtualization. Now as a disclaimer, I don't necessarily recommend disabling it officially as it can put you at greater risk security wise, but doing so did net me some massive performance gains. Now, one way of disabling it is to turn off core isolation in Windows, but for maximum effect, I found it's best to disable SVM on AMD systems in the BIOS or virtualization on Intel systems in their BIOS. And from what I'm hearing, AMD might actually benefit more than Intel. I can't necessarily confirm that, but even on an Intel 14700K system, I'll be testing today, I found some pretty significant differences, which by the way, here are the rest of the system specs. But in any case, let me show you just how drastic it can be across nine different games. And let's start off with the finals at 720p max settings and DLSS on performance. Now, I know that sounds pretty wild and you're probably not gonna be playing your games at 720p using DLSS, but I did this to ensure that the CPU was always 100% of the bottleneck. And yes, there are going to be games even at 4K, especially if you have an RTX 4090 where you will see, because I definitely saw on my system at 4K, some significant improvements in the 1% lows as well but in any case that's why i'm testing it that way and on this game using those settings well i saw an average fps increase by disabling it of 11 percent and an increase to the one percent low performance by 26 percent and a 26 percent improvement on the one percent lows means that your game is going to feel a whole lot less choppy as those frame rates that you get 1% of the time, those lowest numbers are going to be much higher, giving you a smoother gaming experience. But let's move on to the next game, Dragon's Dogma 2, 720p max settings, DLSS Ultra Performance. And as you can see here, guys, not every single game is gonna see significant gains as this one's basically the same, but moving on to Baldur's Gate 3. And once again, the gains are pretty substantial. 12% uplift on average and 10% uplift on the 1% lows. Now moving on to Microsoft Flight Simulator 720p max settings. And here we saw a 15% improvement to the average FPS and an 11% improvement to the 1% lows. Then next up we have Cyberpunk 2077 720p max settings and DLSS ultra performance. Here a 14% improvement to the average FPS and a 13% improvement to the 1% lows. Then we have Total Warhammer 3 720p max settings 50% resolution. Pretty wild yes but a 5% improvement to the average FPS and surprisingly a 2.9x increase to the 1% low and I made sure to retest this one many many times and yeah that's what I was getting so for some reason this is definitely an outlier but yeah this game hates having virtualization on at least on my system. And then next up, we have Red Dead Redemption 2, 720p custom settings, DLSS ultra performance. And here we're seeing a 5% uplift on average, but the 1% lows are basically the same. And then on seven days to die, 720p max settings, basically the same with virtualization on versus off. And then finally we have Kingdom Come Deliverance, 720p max settings. And here we got a 9% improvement to the average and a 7% uplift on the 1% lows. And in terms of multi-core performance or synthetic benchmarks, here you can see with both Cinebench R23 and Geekbench 6, basically margin of error, they're the same essentially. And then finally we have the nine game average where 
overall the average FPS did get a 7% boost, which is, hey, that's not nothing, but the 1% lows improved by 14%. And fellas, a 14% improvement is sadly a larger improvement than what we're seeing out of the new Intel or AMD CPUs this year, meaning if you wanna upgrade your CPU, well, again, I'm not telling you to do this, but Technically, if you did do this like I did in my testing, you would likely see a more substantial improvement than buying an entire new platform. And that's a lot of money saved. Hence why I'm leaving this off on all my systems. But of course it does come with potential security risks as we mentioned earlier. So it's probably best if it's left on, but nevertheless, that's pretty impressive that you can get a 14% improvement by just disabling one setting in your BIOS. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that you should leave SVM or virtualization on, or are you someone who turns it off? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you guys in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you wanna see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.